You know, put the partisanship, put the special interests aside, and get down to getting business done for the people of America. We're tired of the old politics as usual, and that's why, with all due respect, I do respect your years in the U.S. Senate, but I think Americans are craving something new and different, and that new energy and that new commitment that's going to come with reform, I think that's why we need to send the maverick from the Senate and put him in the White House, and I'm happy to join him there. I'd like to respond about the tax increases, and uh, you know we, we can speak in agreement here that darn right we need tax relief for Americans so that jobs can be created here. Now Barack Obama and Senator uh, Biden also voted for the largest tax increases in U.S. history. Barack had 94 opportunities to side on the people's side and reduce taxes, and 94 times he voted to increase taxes or not support a tax reduction, 94 times. I'm still on the tax thing because I want to correct you on that again. And I want to let you know what I did as a mayor and as a governor. And I may not answer the questions the way that either the moderator or you want to hear, but I'm going to talk straight to the American people and let them know my track record also. Now, you said recently that higher taxes or asking for higher taxes or paying higher taxes is patriotic. Um, in the middle class of America, which is where Todd and I have been, you know, all of our lives, that's not patriotic. Patriotic is saying, government, you know, you're not always the solution. In fact, too often you're the problem. So government, lessen the tax burden on the private sector and on our families and get out of the way and let the private sector and our families grow and thrive and prosper. Senator Biden, you would remember that in that energy, energy plan that Obama voted for, that's what gave those oil companies those big tax breaks. Your running mate voted for that. You know what I had to do in the state of Alaska? I had to take on those oil companies and tell them, no, you know, any of the greed there that has been kind of um, instrumental, I guess, in their mode of operation, that wasn't going to happen in my state. When we talk about energy, we have to consider the need to do all that we can to allow this nation to become energy independent. It's a nonsensical position that we are in when we have domestic supplies of energy all over this great land. And East Coast politicians who don't allow energy producing states like Alaska to produce these, to tap into them. And instead, we're relying on foreign countries to produce for us. Energy independence is the key to this nation's future, to our economic future and to our national security. So when we talk about energy plans, it's not just about uh, who got a tax break and who didn't, and we're not giving oil company tax breaks, but it's about a heck of a lot more than that. Energy independence is the key to America's future. Now, you said regarding Senator McCain's uh, military policies there, Senator Biden, that you supported a lot of these things. In fact, you said that uh, you wanted to run, you'd be honored to run with him on the ticket. And that's an indication, I think, of some of the support that you had, at least until you became the VP pick here. Um, <laughs> You also said that Barack Obama was not ready to be commander-in-chief. And I know, again, that you opposed the move that he made to try to cut off funding for the troops, and I respect you for that. I, I don't know how you can defend that position now, but um, Barack Obama, though, another story there. Anyone, I think, who can cut off funding for the troops after promising not to, that's another story. But again, with some of these dictators who hate America and hate what we stand for with our freedoms, our democracy, our tolerance, our respect for women's rights, those who would try to destroy what we stand for cannot be met with just sitting down on a presidential level as Barack Obama had said he would be willing to do. That is beyond bad judgment. That is dangerous. For a ticket that wants to talk about change and looking into the future, there's just too much finger pointing backwards to ever make us believe that that's where you're going. Oh man, it's so obvious that I'm a, a Washington outsider and uh, someone just not used to the way you guys operate because here you voted for the war and now you oppose the war. You're one who says, you know, as so many politicians do, I was for it before I was against it or vice versa. Americans are craving that straight talk and just want to know, hey, if you voted for it, tell us why you voted for it. And it was a war resolution. Just everyday working class Americans saying, you know, government, just get out of my way if you're going to do any harm and mandate more things on me and take more of my money and income tax and business taxes. You're going to have a choice uh, in just a few weeks here on either supporting a ticket that wants to create jobs and bolster our economy and win the war, or you're going to be supporting a ticket that wants to increase taxes, which ultimately kills jobs and is going to hurt our economy. 
Fascinating. So, Joe, there you will go again, pointing backwards again, though. You prefaced your whole <laughs> comment with the Bush administration. Now, doggone it, let's look ahead and tell Americans what we have to plan to do for them in the future. You mentioned education, and I'm glad that you did. I know that education you are passionate about, and with your wife being a teacher for 30 years, and God bless her, her reward is in heaven, right? In my comment there, it was a lame attempt at a joke, and yours was a lame attempt at a joke, too, I guess, because nobody got it. Of course we know what a vice president does. <laughs> They didn't get they yours didn't get or mine. mine. Which one they didn't, didn't get they get? Mine. No, no. Um, it was Ronald Reagan who said that freedom is always just one generation away from extinction. We don't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. We have to fight for it and protect it and then hand it to them so that they shall do the same. Or we're going to find ourselves spending our sunset years telling our children and our children's children about a time in America back in the day when men and women were free. We will fight for it, and there is only one man in this race who has really ever fought for you, and that's Senator John McCain.